All right, so we are getting started in, a, in just about a minute, maybe two. And so thanks for joining us for everybody who's already on. Really, really happy that you made it. There's 20 people on and we don't even start for another couple minutes. It's awesome. Uh, David, Adam Beckstead's on, Barbara. I can't say your last name, Barbara. Glory, maybe. I'm, I'm probably not even doing it justice. Dan Pride, uh, Eric Wells, Helena, McDonald, Jake Ash, Jeff Dean. Hey, Jeff, good to see you, brother. Uh, Jesse Almaraz, uh, good to have you. Uh, thanks for the good shout out, Jesse. Um, Kelly Saunders is on, Kim, ne uh, Kim Neal, um, Christy Fluke, Linda Hickey, Mel Esther. And you put it all in cap smell. I like that. Uh, Robert Kliat. I'm probably not doing that one justice either. I'm bad at reading names. <laughs> oh, there's Tom. Everyone's popping on now. I guess that's what happens in a minute, too. Uh, we're, it's exploding. So, welcome, everybody. Go to the chat box if you can't panelists. So I can be yeah. Susan from Broomfield, Kelly from Charlotte, North Carolina, Eric from uh, David. You you sent it to just the panelists, so no one else can see this. But I'll read it. I think only the phone is cutting out. Uh-oh. Is my phone cutting out, Linda? Yeah, it was cutting out there for a minute, but I think it's back. Dang it. All right. Well, take it away, Dan. All right. Well, I want to thank everybody, number one, for, for being here with us. And I hope my audio is coming in okay as well. Um, have you, can you hear me okay? I can. Uh, how about the okay, attendees? Good. Can you guys hear him? Look at that. Oh, yes, everyone yes, it says is. it's cool. Good. You're fine. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I don't want to, um, we have a lot of content to cover tonight and I'm so thankful for everybody, you know, being on with us. Um, I asked Adam to join us cause he, uh, has, has some experience in this space as well. And I think, you know, one of the reasons why, um, I, I started the multifamily investor nation group was to be able to, uh, connect and bring together everybody in the multifamily investor space to be able to network, to be able to train together on webinars like this, and then also to be able to get together at local events, you know, ones that are coming up that are larger events like Adams that's going to be coming up soon in November, and also some other events, uh, you know, like uh, Rod Cleve, Brad Sumrock, Joe Fairless, um, Michael Blanc, all of the major guys that are putting on larger events. My goal with Multi Investor Nation is not to go out there and put on a bunch of events as far as these larger, you know, massive, you know, multiple, you know, a uh, hundred or a thousand people events. My goal is to really create a network of quality multifamily investors that want to get together at, lo at, at locally, but also train through a webinar platform like this. Now we have we have some really good guests coming on soon too. Not that you know. Adam and I aren't good guests, <laughs> but uh, we have some uh, some other guests that are lined up um, that are going to be coming on. I, I've secured Joe Fairless to come on and talk with us on one of our webinar platforms. I have Matt Faircloth who's going to be coming on, and I also have a cost segregation expert, uh, Yona Weiss, who's going to be coming on from Madison Spec. So, you know, those of you who registered for this webinar, um, you've provided us with your email. So we'll send you an email once we have the next uh, webinar, you know, ready to be registered for. If for some reason you get an email and you don't want to be continued to update, just unsubscribe from the email list. We don't want to bother you if you don't want to be bothered, but this group is really for the high quality multifamily investors. And, uh, and so we want to make sure we have that, that, that group set up like that. Right now we have, uh, we've started this group about 10 days ago and we already have 708 members and 19 groups, as you can see across the country. And so if you live near any one of these areas, please go to meetup.com search for multifamily investor nation and you will see some of these meetup groups all across the country that are popping up. We're usually putting up about three to five a day right now um, across the country. And 
if you want to be a part of this and you want to be a part of helping to start these, um, please, you know, let me know. Um, send me a PM, send me a message on Facebook, send me a, send me an email. Um, let me know. And uh, I'd be glad to jump on a call with you and, and see if it might be a good fit um, to be able to host one of these types of meetups in your area and in your neck of the woods. And even if you're already doing a meetup and, and you want to try to tag tie in with us a little bit, you can, there's some options for that as well. But I've been really blessed and overwhelmed by the response that we've had so far with these 19 members and co-organizers in these various markets that are, um, that are putting on events and, and really, you know, providing a platform for um, a, a successful multi-family investor nation. And so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about raising private capital. And so I, I want to first start off by saying that when you're, when you talk about raising private capital, it is a relationship and it is a friendship type business. Okay. So if you, if you have raised any amount of money or talked to any amount of investors, you know, or if you're an investor yourself, you know that people only invest with people that they know, like, and trust. And if you don't get anything out of this entire webinar tonight, that is the biggest takeaway that I would say that you need to have from tonight is that in order to get a high quality network or base of investors that are willing to put money into your deal as you find them and as you put them together, you need to make sure that they know, like, and trust you. If you can hit all three of those things, your raising private capital efforts will go so much smoother and so much easier. People have to be confident in you and they also have to be confident in the people that are putting this deal together with you. So just remember those three things. That you, in order to raise capital successfully without a lot of headache, you, that you have to know, that the investor has to know, like, and trust you. And that's very important. So a lot of things we're going to talk about tonight are going to be about putting you in a position to be able to have these investors know, like, and trust you. So let's first start off, Adam, and talk about authority platforms. Because I know you have a really big authority platform that you've built out in your local market there in Colorado. So start us off here and talk to us about the authority platforms and why those are so important when it comes to raising private capital. Yeah, so first off, let me just say one thing to start. And, you know, before I talk about the importance, I just want to share something slightly inspirational. I started a meetup less than two years ago. And just literally and truthfully, within that two years, I've now raised four. 0.4 million just from that one group, just from the group that's less than two years old. Um, so it really is effective if you use it appropriately and correctly. Um, maybe a little bit of information on uh, just briefly how, how I started it, um, what else it's done for me besides just help raise private capital. And, um, and then maybe a, a tip or two on what you guys could do if you want to start your own meetup group. Um, so I started it out because I was brand new to, just totally brand new to Denver. I uh, didn't know anybody here and I was getting back into multifamily after having my tail between my legs for a few years after I got caught with my pants down with a triplex that, uh, I, none of my renters could pay me during the crash. So it was me a few years to get back. And I finally decided that. And I said, well, um, specifically within real estate, your network is your net worth. So I said to myself, well, I don't have a network. So I'm, I'm pretty much screwed. So I tried to say, what can I do to fix this? And I started looking at other people's meetups and something hit me and I kind of decided I'm going to need to just start my own. I don't know why I, I knew that, but I felt like if I had my own platform, I could be seen as a leader within a new city and it could propel me a lot faster. So I started a meetup group and I started to just add value to other people and it grew and it grew and grew. And I have some strategies that I'd love to help 
you out if you want to start your own authority platform, like a podcast, like a meetup, like a Facebook group. Um, this is very, very, very important because people need to see you as that leader in the space. This is one of the biggest things that can benefit you. I call it a hack. Okay. Now you're hacking into the system to allow yourself greater success for raising private capital. And like I said before, in my group in less than two years so far from a meetup group. And so it's just important to, to share that. It's just that one meetup group. Yes, I have a podcast, but I'm just specifically talking about what you can do very easily instead of going to three meetups a week, start your own and host it a couple times a month. So that's what I kind of wanted to share on that. Um, one thing that I could say, well, first off, hopefully everybody can hear me, um, chat. I'd like to learn, Adam, you are in and out. Oh crap. Sorry. Both Austin and San Antonio. All right, guys. So just let me see if I can fix my service by going outside. I'm in the mountains here. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's in the mountains in Colorado. Uh, in Colorado and sometimes doesn't get the best coverage. Well, one so, of the sorry that, that I was um, in and out. Um, go ahead, Dan. Okay. Um, one of the things that, uh, that I was going to say is, is, you know, a lot of times when you go to a meetup, you can go there for the education, which is good. You can go there for the networking, which is good. But when you go there, you need, I think that you really should have a purpose and a reason and, and, a, and, a, and, a, and an outcome set before you actually get there. You know, that way you, when you go, you kind of know in your, in your brain, in your mind, what you are going to that meetup for. So if you're going there to find a sponsor, great, look for a sponsor. If you're going there to raise capital, you know, and find GP partners or LP partners, you need to have that in mind and make it known in that meetup group, you know, and in, in a lot of meetup groups, there will be an opportunity for you to kind of stand up and explain what you're currently working on and what you're seeking. And, and that's the time where you need to tell people what it is. You know, I've been to some meetup groups before where, you know, they, they open up the floor and say, does anybody have anything to say? And there'll be a room full of, you know, 20, 30, 40 people. And, and nobody stands up, but maybe two or three people. But that's your opportunity. When you're at a meetup group, that's your opportunity. Come out of your shell, get into your, 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 your not so comfort zone and speak and tell people exactly what you're looking for because people can't help you unless they know what you're looking for. Yeah, I, I completely, completely agree. Um, am I coming through a little bit better now than I was before, Dan? Yes, you are. Yep. That's okay. Better. All right. Yeah. Sorry about that. I was in my house and it was, it's even harder in there, but Hey, um, there's so much value that comes from running your own meetup group. I mean, go to other meetup groups. Yes. But if you could be your own host, it will change a lot for you. So I, I highly recommend that. Uh, you know what, by the way, one of the events that we have coming up, um, I'd be willing to share a little discount for anybody who wanted to come to it. Um, but you'd have to just stay to the end of the, uh, end of the web webinar, but I could take a hundred bucks off of this upcoming event. It's all, it's a two day raising money event with awesome speakers. Actually, Dan, you're going to be one of them as long as you can make yep. it in. Um, we've got you on I'll stage. I just, I just booked my tickets last night. I'm actually going to bring my uh, six-year-old son, Caleb, with me too. Nice, nice. And we've got Gene Trowbridge, uh, the attorney. He's my personal attorney for syndication, uh, securities attorney. We've got Kathy Fedke. Uh, she's extremely famous. And uh, I don't want to give away everybody, but we have about 15 speakers in those two days. It'll be very, very packed of value as well. Well, the next thing that, uh, that we're going to be talking about is still continuing on that authority platform and talking about how 
not only can meetups be very important for you to start and host on your own and even uh, using the, you know, the platform of the multifamily investor nation to do that is great. You know, we have that available to you. You know, we're not charging for it. There's no fees for you to be a co-organizer or anything. It's just, we're trying to build out that multifamily investor nation. So if you're interested in that, let me know. And I can always, you know, jump on a call with you and, and send you the details and kind of tell you what the platform is going to be. But I let you run that mult that meetup, however you want to run it. So it's yours. You can do it however you want. Um, it just makes it a little bit easier for you if, if we can manage it for you from that side of things. Plus, it doesn't cost you money once you get to the point where you, if they start charging you. So we take on that expense um, for you. Um, so we also have a private Facebook group called Multifamily Investor Nation. We're working on building out a website to kind of put together a lot of this information. But you can go to uh, the Multifamily Investor Nation Facebook page. You can also go to um, the multifamily um, investor page on Meetup. So go to meetup.com and search for uh, Multifamily Investor Nation to find that. But send me a message anywhere you can. You can email me. Um, my email, just in case you guys want to know what it is, um, email me directly at dan, D-A-N, at hanfordcapital.com. And you can see on your screen there, Hanford Capital, right underneath my name, .com. Just make sure that when you spell out my name, you spell out the entire word hand, like your hand, like you're typing with, and then Ford, F-O-R-D, like the vehicle. So I always say putting your hand on the Ford vehicle. So dan at hanfordcapital.com. Shoot me an email. Say, I'm interested. Give me your phone number. I'll reply with a link. So you can kind of get, jump on my schedule and we can talk about um, uh, trying to get you part of the, uh, the multifamily investor nation and running your own group through that. So the other thing that, that will help to bring you into a different position and into a different light, and the next two things we're going to talk about are, again, about continuing that authority brand, that and continuing that authority plat one, platform. Um, obviously, you can be an author. You know, you look at somebody like Joe Fairless and, and some of the books that he's written and several other people that are writing books now on, you know, multifamily investing and not even just books, but even going on there writing blogs having a website where you're constantly putting content out there. You can also go to places like Bigger Pockets, biggerpockets.com, go on there, register for a pro account, make sure you're on there providing value. If any of you have been on Bigger Pockets, you have most likely seen me on there in the multifamily uh, forum. I'm trying to provide as much content to you guys as possible and value to you as possible. You know, again, I, you, if you see what Adam and I are doing, we are creating and building that authority platform, you know, I mean, even, even, even Adam has wrote a book, you know? Um, so there's, there's lots of different things in here that um, you can really do. And again, it's, if people would, you know, sit back and they go, well, I can't write a book on this because I'm not an expert. And what you have to understand is, is that an, an expert is anybody that knows more than somebody else about something. So if you're in front of a room full of people that don't know anything about multifamily, you're the expert in that room on multifamily. And so to write a book about multifamily, it doesn't even have to be a long book. You know, you know, Joe Fairless just wrote a book recently. It's like, you know, three or 400 pages, however long it is. It's a thick book. It's a good book. But, you know, you don't have to go through that much length. You can, you can start off by just writing a booklet, you know, something along those lines. Um, but writing, writing blog articles, writing some books or booklets, and then providing content and value on bigger pockets. Now, I will tell you, just to tease it a little bit, at the very end, one of the very last things I'm going to talk to you about at the end of this webinar is something that I call a stealth strategy for finding uh, high net worth individuals to be able to find those people who have uh, are, are who are accredited investors. So for those of you who are listening and who are new to multifamily or new to raising private capital, an accredited investor is somebody who has a a, a net worth over one million dollars or more or they have an income if they're single of $200,000 a year annually, or they have, if they're married, $300,000 annually, and they expect that content to continue. So those are those high net worth, those are your accredited investors, and really those are the investors that you want. Those are the types of investors that, you know, that will join your team and continually put into your, to your deals if you provide the returns, if you provide the best results for those investors, they will keep coming back, and guess what? High net worth individuals hang out with high net worth individuals. That's just kind of how it works. 
And so if you can get into, get into a couple of these, they will start to refer their family and their friends. And a lot of times they are high net worth and, and, and accredited investors as well. So be sure, I mean, make sure that you're, you're constantly seeking for those high net worth individuals. And again, the last tip on here I'm going to show you is going to be about that, about what's that thing that, 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 that Dan Hanford does um, that I don't even know if Adam knows about this. Okay. I haven't even told him about this yet. So um, I'm sure he's waiting with bated breath as well. No, I was actually going to say that. I was like, what is he going to offer? Cause I need to know this. <laughs> <laughs> you got to stay tuned. Adam. I, it's just a little uh, piece out of nowhere. You know, I was coming out with it. So um, it's actually really, really good. And I think everybody should do it if they're able to. And I'll talk about that uh, towards the end there. Um, so make sure you stay on to, to listen to that. So next thing is, is just like Adam said earlier, become a podcaster. You know, Adam has his podcast. What's your podcast, Adam? It's called Creative Real Estate Podcast. So Creative, like, Real, Estate Creative Real Estate Podcast. Yep. And you can go to his website, realbluespruce.com. And I believe you have a link there to it. Um, I also on, uh, I also have a podcast. It's not even related to real estate. It's called, uh, tough decisions for entrepreneurs. So you can, if you want to get kind of see what I'm doing about the podcast that I have, you can go to toughdecisions.net Um, and then, and, and or you can even go to .com, but we usually just do the .net, toughdecisions.net. You'll see there, we are putting, it's a daily podcast. We're putting com we're putting uh, content out there in front of everybody every day. And one of the main reasons why I decided to do that kind of a podcast is because I wanted to have an excuse to contact high net worth individuals. I wanted to have an excuse to, to send them messages and say, hey, I see you're a successful entrepreneur. I see you uh, because of your success, you've probably made some tough decisions in your life and in your business career. And I'd love to invite you on to the podcast. And when they come onto the podcast, I now have their captive audience. You know, I, I had. Um, uh, there's a lot of people that I've had on that have podcasts that have invited me to be on their podcast. And I know Adam, you've probably had the same thing where you've been on other people's podcasts because you were able to swap podcasts back and forth. And I've actually had investors reach out to me from being on other people's podcasts that have nothing to do with real estate. You know, I've, yep. I, there's two podcasts that I was on recently that one of them has a hundred thousand downloads per, per episode per episode. So the moment somebody listens to that over the next, I mean, they, they, they release that episode over the next 30 days, a hundred thousand people are going to hear about me and what we're doing. And the second well, one has 20,000 downloads. So it's all about trying to get your out your, yourself out there and, and get yourself into that authority platform and, and building that credibility. And, uh, and you can speak a little bit about that too, about how, how the podcast has, has produced some investors. I know you said mentioned, you know, in the green room that haven't had any of them actually put any money up, but you've had some soft commitments already from some investors that have come off your podcast. Oh yeah, definitely. So, I mean, I was, I was on a podcast, not even related to real estate. And actually I think that's the best podcast to be on. Honestly, um, is you're the new guy and it's like, whoa, he's able to raise money. Uh, so it was called Ditching 9 to 5. Uh, on, on, it's an entrepreneur podcast. And that's where I got my highest net worth uh, investor. Um, so we, we're yet to do a deal because I've been able to raise money through other people. But Dan, you mentioned something that I just want to touch on because I think maybe some folks could think that it just kind of breezed by or they might not have seen the real value in what you said. But having a thought leadership platform does so much for us in what we're doing. And one of the biggest ones is having a captive audience of the person that you're bringing on. So guys, when I'm networking at a, in a room, because I have a podcast, I network completely differently. Okay. So I... Well, I don't bring up the podcast. It's not like you're just bragging about it all the time. That's not the point. What the point is, is you reach out to somebody who's, and you find out that they're doing something huge. Okay. You find out they're just doing something huge. Well, in other circumstances, when I didn't have a podcast, I could just say, that's cool. You're better than me. 
And that was about it. And now, because I have a podcast, my approach is, that's impressive. I would love to share that with my audience. Could I bring you on the podcast? And that completely changes the dynamic of your relationship with that person. And it completely changes the dynamic of your own network. You're, the people that you expose yourself with, the five people that you're around the most, those are the people that you're going to be like. So when you're continuing to interview high-level people on your podcast that you meet at these events, that benefits you quite a bit. Plus, I love the fact that because I have a podcast, some weeks I might be recorded on four other people's podcasts. For some weeks, I might have four different podcasts coming out. And like Dan said, you're, you're in front of 20 or 100,000 people just for one episode in some cases. So it can really benefit you by just having your own platform, which allows other podcasters to want to reach out to you and say, come on my podcast. And they're hoping that you'll invite them on theirs as well. That's just the way it works and it happens. So I recommend it, especially if you're trying to raise money, have some type of thought leadership platform. Well, and, and one thing I'll tie into that uh, is the podcast helps me with what I'm going to talk to you about in the end of the webinar as my last tip. So I'll tell you how I kind of dovetail the podcast with that. And you don't necessarily have to have a podcast to do the last tip, but it definitely helps the last tip. So stay tuned to the very end and I'll share that with you as well. So the next thing that we want to talk about is, you know, other areas and other ways to be able to get yourself in front of high net worth individuals. So you can volunteer, you know, there's, there are, there are um, uh, local charities and nonprofits that are constantly looking for people to volunteer um, organizations that, that need board members to be able to help them make decisions. So if you have any experience in, in, in business or finance or real estate or anything that you can provide value to that board, those 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 um, charities and nonprofits really need somebody to be able to help them and uh, and really you know get them to the next level. And so the, a lot of times at those charities on on those boards, those charities and nonprofits, there are high net worth individuals. So now you can get on that board, go to these board meetings, and now you're in a room full of high net worth individuals. Now at the same time with these with these charities and these nonprofits guess what else they do on a, usually a, an annual or biannual basis? They have networking opportunities. So they have, you know, a, a fundraising opportunities where they're doing a, 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 an annual gala or gala or however you want to say it, you know, a, a, an annual event where they bring in a lot of their, their, their donors into one room. And again, you know, when you, when you go into a room like this, you know, you're not just going to sit there and go from table to table in a, in a nonprofit, you know, money raising, you know, event and just go room to table by table and introduce yourself and, and tell them that you're looking for investors. I mean, that's, that's not the way to do it. And I don't think most of us on here would, would do it that way. But um, that's, that's what you have to do is, is you have to build a relationship with them. It goes back to the very first thing we talked about, about building relationships. You have to be able to find investors that will know, like, and trust you. So again, those are the three things that you should be writing down right now is that in order to get investors to put money up in your deal, they have to know, they have to like, and they have to trust you. And again, a lot of that authority platform building a, a check, checks a lot of those boxes. They, 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 can, they know you because you're on a platform and you're, you're providing that content. And you, the, you're, you know, they're, they're going to they're trust you as they're following you, and they're going to like you because they're listening to your content. And so all of those things are being checked. Now, again, you know, you can't just, you know, you know, find people without building another relationship with them. There's SEC requirements and stuff like that, and and for for how you raise money from different people and put them in your deals. But it, that's why it's all about relationships because you have to have a pre-existing relationship with people in order and with these investors before you can just present them with opportunities and deals. And I'm not an SEC attorney. I don't claim to be an SEC attorney, but at Adam's event coming up in November, he is going to have some, some people there that are going to be talking about, uh, you know, some of those requirements and some of those nuances that you want to be aware of 
in the multifamily space and in any space where you're trying to raise money, um, whether it be multifamily or, you know, self storage or, you know, even single family, whatever you're doing, you got to make sure that you're following the guidelines properly. Um, and again, at the same time, you know, I, I always, uh, I was talking to an investor over the weekend and I was actually in a room full of investors and, you know, these invest, I bet you there was probably at least north of a hundred to $150 million worth of net worth in the room that I was in over the weekend. And it was a physician conference that I was talking at, I, that I was speaking at. And that's another good way to get in front of some people is to share some of your knowledge that you have in front of high net worth individuals, whether it be physician groups, attorneys, you know, uh, engineers, you know, any of those types of specialists that, that, that have higher net worths, try to find something that you can provide value to them and get in front of them. And that's, again, one of the reasons why we, I have my podcast and I'll talk about how I use that on the very end as well, which we're, we're, uh, the pod, I mean, this, this, this webinar is going to be about 30 to 45 minutes and then we'll open it up for questions and answers. So as you're, you're listening, if you have some questions that come to your mind, go ahead and put them in the chat box and we will answer them towards the end. Um, because I know sometimes when you're listening, you come up with questions in your head and you might forget about them towards the end, but feel free to uh, go on there and onto the chat box, whether you're listening uh, on uh, on Facebook Live or you're on the Zoom webinar, wherever you are, put the put the comments on there and or on the chat box and we'll make sure we answer those questions. So making sure that you get in front of these high net worth individuals is very important. And uh, in this room of high net worth individuals over the weekend, you know, one of the one of the things that the guys, or the, one of these investors asked me was, well, what's your Bernie Madoff clause? You know, that kind of thing. You know, how do I know this isn't some sort of a scam? And so you're going to get questions like that. And you have to be able to know how to, you have to have to be able to have an answer for those things and, 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 and answer those things. And one of the best ways to answer that question is, is, well, every single one of our investments is registered with the SEC and we have an SEC attorney on board. Did you want to say something on that item? I'm sorry, my kid, my kiddos were being a little bit noisy, so I muted it for a minute. But um, no, uh, you're right. We need to absolutely be using the SEC. And I hope that if anybody on is going to be raising money for syndications, that that paperwork is, is done properly. So with an, a syndication attorney putting together the PPMs. So that's yeah. really it. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so next thing is networking with strangers, okay? Now, this might sound counterintuitive, what your mommy taught you when you were younger, not to hang out with strangers, but you have to start to network and hang out with strangers. And I don't mean like anybody off the street. I'm talking about when you go to an event where there is investors, whether it be a multifamily event or some other event with high net worth individuals in it, you need to, again, just like you go into a meetup group, you need to know before you walk through that threshold of that hotel or that conference room, what you are there to get, okay? You're, what's, your, what's your end game? What's your goal for being there? Are you just going to be there to be a fly on the wall and waste three days of your life that you'll never get back and then go home and have a page, pages full of notes but not actually going out and networking with people? You know, don't just go back up to your room during lunch. Go find somebody that, you can tap on the shoulder and get to know and, and introduce yourself and, and go to, go to lunch with them, you know, meet people in the morning for coffee. You know, one of the ways that I'm using the multifamily investor nation group is I am putting together events when I go, I mean, not events, but I'm putting together networking opportunities, you know, 10, 15 people when I, wherever I'm traveling, you know, on December, I mean, on the, on no, on, on October 10th, um, in two weeks, I'll be in Dallas, Texas for one day. I'm going to Dallas, Texas for one day. I'm looking at a property there, a multifamily complex there, and I'm going to be there just for one day. Well, to make the best use of my day, I did, I'm flying in in the morning first thing and going to go look at the property. And then I went ahead and scheduled an event uh, in Dallas where I'm going to have um, uh, a, a group of people getting together at, for lunch. And I'm, I'm charging for it. I'm not charging like a bunch of money. I'm not trying to make money off of it, but it's one of those events that have um, uh, an exclusive 
uh, event that no one else can come to, and I'm providing lunch and all this kind of stuff. And the last slide I'm going to go over will talk to you about how I'm doing that. So kind of, kind of, kind of teasing at every single one of these slides here, but I don't want to give it away. Um, but uh, even, even though I'm, I'm taking a family vacation to the Mall of America, which is in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and if any of you have ever been to the Mall of America, it is phenomenal. If you've never been, you need to write that down, put it on your bucket list. Uh, we're going in November. My wife and I have gone uh, with our kids some, uh, probably at least seven or eight times over the last couple of years. I like it because unlike Disney, where you're miserable outside with the sun beaming down on you, it's indoors, 72 to 2 degrees all the time, three or four stories worth of shopping in the mall. There's hotels on both sides. There's restaurants. You can go from the airport in Minneapolis all the way to the to the um, uh, to the mall with with no uh, with with not even getting out into the into the into the cold air if you're going to go in there in November, which is when we're going. So we're going to go there in November and be there for three days. And what I decided to do was host a meetup. So I'm going to look for a co-organizer in Minneapolis. And if you're in that area and you want to help me with that, let me know. But there is a restaurant in the hotel. So I put out on the multifamily investor nation that I wanted to do a meetup there. And I wanted to limit it to 12 people. And I'm going to buy lunch. So I mean, not lunch, but breakfast. And I already found out that the breakfast buffet was like, you know, 20 bucks. So I'll take care of the tip and I'm charging 20 bucks for the, for the breakfast. And one of the other things that that does is it gets people that are, that are really serious about multifamily. If they're willing to put up money to come to it, then they're ser- that I feel like they're more serious. And so you're going to get some people that are going to come that you know, are going to be new, and so you can help them. And then you're going to get some people that are going to be in the room and that, that are going to be better than you, and they can, they can help you, and vice versa. So there's, it's always, that's all about the networking and, and getting in there with strangers. And that's how I want you as investors to use the multifamily investor nation. If you're traveling to a city and we have a meetup group there and you want to set, set up one of those meetups, shoot me an email. Let me know. Say, hey, I'm, I'm one of the members of the Multifamily Investor Nation. I'm going to Dallas on this date to look at some property or on business or, or whatever the case is and, and you want to put up a meetup. So that's perfectly fine. That's what this is here for. But you do be able to have those, you know, those, those meetups and, and, make a, and these are informal networking meetups. You know, you're going to go there. There's not going to be a, a, a uh, there's not going to be a, a speaker or anything like that. They're getting together, having time with, with, with having lunch, being able to speak the language. The more you newbies in the multifamily investing space can get around people who talk this and breathe this all the time, the better you're going to become when you're talking to investors. And that again is all part of it as well. It's going to network to find investors, but also to go to network to get in front of people who know more than you. I can talk the language and talk the lingo. And you'll, once you do that, you'll start to absorb that as a sponge and start to learn it. And it will start to become part of you so that when investors ask you questions, you'll be able to answer those questions right away. Okay. So again, I even had somebody recently uh, that's going to be in, in Dallas send me a message and say, hey, I'm going to be in Dallas. And I said, well, I'll be glad to put a meetup in the, up there for you. He's not a co-organizer there, but he wanted to put a meetup on. I put another one up in Dallas. So wherever you're traveling, if you see on our map on meetup that we have a meetup there, send me a message. I'll put one. I'll I'll post a meetup on there for for a breakfast from like seven to nine or whatever, or a lunch, or even going to a local brewery or cafe or whatever it may be, and uh, and put those events on for you because I want this to be a group that we can all use together and help each other out. And I know some of you uh, just got a message somewhere on here about are we recording this event this webinar? Yes, we are recording this webinar. We are going to make it available. Um, it will most likely be available for about 48 hours after the um, 48 to 72 hours after we um, do the webinar, and then uh, and then it will be archived and it will no longer be available. So um, we will have it available for you. If for some reason um, you need to jump off or you need to, if you wanted to share it with some people, this is my last slide. This is a website called Clubcore.com, and I want you to write this down. Club Core is a, pri- is, a, is a group of private clubs. And some of you may have heard about these before, but this is kind of my, you know, very, very high, high uh, highly secretive, you know, thing that I've been doing recently that I've been able to find some high net worth individuals. And it's a closed private club, meaning that you have to know somebody in order to get in. And so it is a, they do have a monthly fee for this, but 
you get actual and you get access to all of their clubs across the entire country. I think it's actually over 300 clubs. They have uh, they have like dining clubs. They have um, uh, uh, country clubs. And the nice thing is, is I think it's like 150 to 200 dollars a month for the membership. And I'm not here to sell this to you, so I don't get anything for recommending this. This is just a strategy that I've been using that I think you could use, and it would be phenomenal. And so. Uh, we have this, this here in our local town in Columbia, South Carolina, which is where we're broadcasting from. And we char it's charged about 150 to $200 a month, maybe more depending on your area and your, your home club. But you can be a part of this. And they have regular, like weekly networking opportunities and, and, and wine and cheese tastings and lobster nights and, and, and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, my wife and I this morning, we had uh, we were actually going to our attorney's office to sign our estate paperwork um, for uh, when we die, which I always hate talking about when I'm going to die. Um, but we had them doing that. Uh, uh, we had to go down to the attorney's office, and the attorney's office is actually the next building over from our local club core, which is called uh, the the name of our club is actually called uh, uh, the Capital City Club. And it's in the very top building of all the, of, of the, of the largest, one of the largest buildings in our downtown area. And it's beautiful. It's all over. It, it is, it's all, you can see a beautiful stance of the entire city. And, you know, when I'm going to Dallas, guess what I did? I contacted Club Corps. They give you a private concierge that you can email and say, hey, I'm going to be going to Dallas, Texas. Wanted to see if the, the Club Corps in Dallas, Texas could host 12 people. And you go there. And you, you can host 12 people. I got a confirmation within, within about an hour, hour and a half saying, you, you know, Dr. Hanford, your reservation has been reserved for 12 people for this, for October 10th at, at 1130 a.m. And I'm going to charge $25 a person for them to come to that because that's what they're going to charge me is just probably right around $25. And so um, people will they'll pay that to come to the, to come to that little meetup and it'll be, uh, it'll be. Uh, a meetup that we're going to do in a private club. And so it, you can, it, you can see how doing it in an event in a club like this versus, you know, a, a, you know, a typical, you know, meetup can be very powerful. You know, it could be, you can even tap into our local uh, club core group, Capital City Club has its own real estate meetup, not meetup, but real estate networking night. So you can go there and network with other people that are, that are already interested in real estate. They might not be in multifamily, but you know they can be. It might be interested in some other type of one. But that is that is one of the important, one of the most important things that you can do is, is join this group. And if you need someone to sponsor you because you have to have to know somebody in order to get in, send me an email, Dan at HanfordCapital.com, and I'll be more than happy to recommend you know you um, to the group and get you and get you involved. I want you to be a part of the multifamily investor nation. So join the multifamily investor nation. Send me an email. Say, hey, I'm one of the members of Multifamily Investor Nation. I'd love to join Club Core or at least get some more information. See if you have one in your hometown. And not only do they have dining opportunities, they have the access to the country clubs. So you can go and play golf. Like in Dallas, there's like 20 or 30 you know, golf courses. And same thing in, in Atlanta, Georgia, there's a ton of golf courses that you can now go to and actually you know, play golf. And all you have to do is pay for the, the, the cart fees. That's it. So your 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 green fees are already paid for with your membership. So you if you if you like to play golf, this will be a phenomenal deal for you to be able to do something like this, to be able to get access to high net worth individuals who are going to be there on a regular basis. But we with my membership, we uh, my wife and I this morning when we went to uh, the, the the attorney this morning, we met early after we dropped the kids off to school. So I have four little kids. I have a seven year old girl, a six year old boy which my six-year-old boy will be at Adam's event. So if you want to meet him, he'll be there. He's, he's cute as a button. Um, and uh, we also have a two-year-old and a nine-month-old. So got a lot of things going on family-wise. Um, but uh, when we went to drop them off at school this morning, uh, we stopped by the Capital City Club and had breakfast. And this was actually the first time I actually had been there for breakfast. Most of the time I've been there for, for lunch or dinner. And I, but I knew that they had had breakfast. And so I went there and I'm seeing like senators and congressmen and very high net worth individuals coming in and out, striking up conversations. And we had, my wife and I sat down, there was a full buffet, um, full breakfast buffet. They had made to order omelets. 
and they had chicken and waffles. So chicken and waffles I had never had before, but this was this was the first time. Um, but it is actually phenomenal. It was really good. Um, and we walked out of there and signed the check for the food, and it was like 15 bucks for the entire meal for both my wife and I to have a coffee and a meal and all that kind of stuff. And it's because of the membership. And so they have, they usually have phenomenal food. They put on the phenomenal events and networking. But again, I, that's what I would suggest is, is this clubcore.com going there, finding if they, finding if you're, and if, you, if, if in your hometown, there is a club core, you know, then, then send me a message and say, Hey, I'd like to join my local club. And I'll, I'll send a message to my local person and tell them that you want to join and you're in, you know, Dallas, Texas, or if you're in, um, you know, Seattle, Washington, or Los Angeles, California, wherever you are, and I'll send them a message and say, hey, I'd like to sponsor this person to get into the club. They'll have somebody reach out to you and talk to you about what the membership is all about. And then uh, and then you can make a decision from there if you want to do that. And then maybe the next time I, when I'm in your town, you can host me at your club. But uh, it allows you to have access to all clubs across the entire country. Adam, I want to, I want to buzz you in here real quick and ask you if, uh, cool. if you've actually had any experience with Club Core before. No, uh, no, but I'm 90% going to join after you just told me that. <laughs> I've never, <laughs> I've never experienced it, but it looks like a great opportunity. Yes, I mean, there, there's, there's usually, you know, um, you know, there's, a, there's, a, there's attorneys in these places. There's, there's, uh, there's physicians. There's, you know, uh, a congressman and and senator. There's people all over this, these clubs that are high net worth individuals. And the reason why these people like these clubs is because a lot of your high net worth individuals are people like physicians that are in front of people all the time that they know and that they serve and they would prefer to have and enjoy a meal where they're not having to worry about, you know, I don't want to say paparazzi, but people bothering them and, and just stuff like that. And so they like to join these types of clubs to have that specialness to their, to their meals and to their, you know, events. And, you know, they'll even put on corporate events at these places too, depending on the size of the club. Yeah, it looks like there's a couple people. I think Whitney and Shane are members. It looks like that's kind of cool. Oh, good. Yeah, good. a couple yeah, people like that. Yeah, who are on. He's in Buckhead Club in Atlanta. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, that sounds like like an opportunity. I'll definitely be looking to ask you to sponsor me. Thanks for bringing this up. Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's jump into uh, your live event here. That's most of the content that I wanted to provide on the webinar and. You know, I hope that you guys found that valuable. And, and again, the one of the best is if you don't take away anything else about this webinar, I would highly, highly encourage you to make sure that you find people that will know, like, and trust you. And following this, this strategy that, uh, strategies that Adam and I have presented tonight will help you be able to put yourself in a position to find people and to, and to be able to build friendships and relationships with people to allow them to know, like, and trust you so that they're willing to be able to put money um, with you on your deals that you have coming up, coming available. So talk to us a little bit about what we're going to expect here at the live, live in-person event. Now, there was a few people that jumped on after you mentioned what it was going to be. So uh, talk to us a little bit more about this event and, uh, and, and, and what it's going to cost them. And I know you have a special that you yeah. wanted to present as well. So go ahead. Yeah. So the tickets um, start at 200 and they go to $1,500. Uh, absolutely, the the two hundred dollar tickets worth fifteen hundred dollars, and the fifteen hundred dollars worth uh, ten grand. So it's just, I mean, we're just trying to add value. We're not trying to make money, you know. But we've got some really incredible, incredible speakers. So Kathy Fetke from R Real Wealth Network. She's been on ABC, NBC, all kinds of stuff, and pretty much everybody, you know, hey, let me know in the comments, guys. Go to chat and tell me if you know who uh, Kathy Fedke is. Also, I have, hold on one second, my kiddo, it's bedtime over here, so I'm working on two things. Thanks. All right, so, um, Kathy Fedke will come, Gene Trowbridge, He's my syndication attorney. He's done several syndications for my company, um, and he's phenomenal. He's going to talk about the ins and outs of the laws. Kathy Fetke is going to talk about a time that she lost a ton of money and how she's still working on finding ways of paying her investors back and, and how that happened and so that it won't happen to you. 
we will have actually Richard Wilson from the family office. So I don't know if everybody on knows what family office is. Let me know, raise your hand, say thumbs up if you know what a family office is and thumbs down if you don't yet know um, what that is. Yeah, go to the comments real quick, guys. I wanna find out who knows and who doesn't know. Um, but a family office is a group of people that work for a family that is ultra wealthy. Most of the time, these single family offices have about a billion dollars under management or at least a hundred million. So Richard Wilson shows us how to hack into those family offices to raise money with a lot more ease. Um, and we've also got a few other speakers, um, a lot of podcasters, a lot of people that are do, doing syndications, some people that are passive investors talking about how, what does a passive investor need. So that's very important to kind of tap into the psychology. I'll also be teaching a little bit on how to start a meetup, and then I'll be teaching a little bit on how to start a podcast. So these things will all be part of this two-day summit in November 17th and 18th. It's a two-day, all-day event. But uh, just real quick, Dan talked me into pulling $100 off of the tickets. Um, so which kind of cool is you get it for more than half off of the general admission. And then you get like 33% off or something like 30% off of the main. Uh, so it's literally a break even for me because there's a lot of costs because there's going to be 375 people <laughs> at that event, which uh, talks goes into what Dan was talking about. How do you walk up to a stranger? How do you raise money? And guys, I'll, let me tell you a hack. Some of the people that I raise the most money from are other syndicators, who, who other aspiring syndicators that, that want to get into the business and need the credibility. And when I have a deal available and they can become part with what I'm doing, it benefits them and me. So just a, just a kind of a little secret. So if you go to my company website, which is realbluespruce.com, uh, just right before we started this webinar today, I set up this little slash OPM because of this OPM webinar to create a hundred dollars off. Um, and that, that will last for 24 hours. So just FYI, it, it'll, no, you know what? I better make it last as long as this is up. So you said it's up for three days, Dan. Yeah. I will, I will take this off in four days. I'll just take this off in four days. So just an incentivization to just hop on there real fast to make sure you secure a, a seat because it's going to be extremely valuable. I, I guarantee the value of this event. If you just are getting the general admission for, I guess this would make it all the way down to under a hundred bucks. Um, I mean, you're getting thousands of dollars of value. Um, I would, I would secure that while you have this discount because this is the only time that I'll share this OPM $100 off. So just, I'll be honest about that. It sounds like a sales pitch, but um, I, I won't offer it again. It'll go back up to regular price. Well, um, Adam, I want to I wanna thank you for, for taking the time to come on. I know it was last minute. We had uh, talked a couple days ago and I said, hey, you know, let's, let's have you jump on the webinar. And you were very, very welcoming and, uh, and able to jump on and provide some value. And I really do appreciate you taking some time. And again, I appreciate you I'm giving the Multifamily Investor Nation a hundred dollars off that registration. Uh, make sure when you type in the address, you, I did test it here. Uh, but the, the link is all lowercase for OPM. So realbluespruce.com slash OPM, all lower, lowercase. And it'll bring you to the uh, event page. I also put the link in the chat box there. So if you're live with us, you'll see it there in the chat box. You can click on that. And, uh, and so thank you guys so much for being on here with us. We're going to open it up now and, and ask for any questions that you might have. I know we've had, I think we had uh, one person um, that might have put a question on here. Um, let's see. Um, so one of the one of the first questions. So on your um, chat box or near there, there's a place for you to put in questions. So if you have questions 
about uh, what we've already covered here of in, in raising um, um, private capital. I know you might uh, have questions outside of the webinar, but I want to try to keep the questions and answers for the webinar specific to, to the webinar. So if you have any questions that you want us to, to answer for you, um, feel free to jump on and, and put those questions on there. I don't see any on there right now. Um, one question that I do have on here was from Angel, um, Angel Moreno. She says, uh, for for someone that doesn't know anything, how can I do this? And I think when you're one of your best things that you can do is to, is to put yourself into events like you know Adam's event and, and other people's events that can start to teach you this stuff. And also, oh, she says, or I said she says he's a he. Um, Angel is a he. So <laughs> sorry about that, Angel. Um, and uh, so uh, what I would say is making sure that you put yourself in a position to be able to learn and to be able to absorb. And I would say that that's what Adam did when he first got started. He wanted to learn this stuff. He, as he, as he, as he, as he put himself in the deep end and said, let's, let's learn this. And, and same thing with myself. That's what I've done. And I'm sure you can speak a little bit on that too, Adam. Oh, absolutely. That is one of the biggest things guys for really getting successful is there's so many people that are so afraid of making a mistake or, or I guess drowning in your uh, instance. There, there are so many people, most of us can swim, you know, but what you don't find that out until you go to the deep end, until you see what you're made of. And to find out if, if we can really raise $4.4 million like I have out of a meetup in less than two years, I've never, I've always had more money than I, needed for my deals because we're be building those relationships. So mm -hmm. I think it's absolutely important to throw yourself into the deep end. Absolutely important to stretch yourself. And although I felt slightly nervous to run my own group, although I felt slightly uneasy about being the person in front of everybody, when I knew that some of my members were going to know more than me, it took some effort to say, it's okay if I'm not the smartest guy in the room. In fact, it's better if I'm not. And so I just decided to go ahead and start it. The same with my podcast. I, I, it, at the time that I started my podcast, I owned only about 10 or 12 multifamily doors multi-family doors 10 or 12 now today i own 800 doors and i've only had the podcast for one year so i jumped into the deep end i gave it all i had i tried to swim and it was because i put myself out there and networked with other people that i grew the most rapidly uh, something happened to me that could not have happened if I didn't jump into the deep end. So I highly, highly agree. And I hope that I see all of us. I know Helena said she won't be able to make it. She's out of the country at that time. This will be in Denver. And I have a lot better people than me at this two-day conference. And we're all going to collaborate together to make sure that we know what to do on the next step so that we can raise money, so that we feel more comfortable starting our podcast, so that we feel more comfortable joining uh, these groups and meetups. And so we know what to say when we're shaking someone's hand at one of these events. I just want to add value to everybody here on this webinar. I'm grateful to be able to share $100 off, and I hope you just go ahead and take advantage of it right now. Um, and I would also look into this thing that Dan was offering. I know you don't make money off of it, Dan, but that's just incredible that you would offer that to all of us here to allow us to be a part of raising money from high, high, high net worth individuals. So this is, this is a great webinar to be a part of. I appreciate it that you let me on here and, and uh, I look forward to seeing everybody in November. Well, I have a question that came in from Adam and it, I'm going to read this to you. And if you want to say a few things about it, you can. And then I can fill it in at the end as well. 
his question is, if you already know a lot of high net worth people and have known them for some time, but they don't, not, but they don't necessarily know that you are in real estate, what are some of the best ways to engage in good conversations with them without feeling like you are bringing up the subject? Awesome. I have an idea that I've really enjoyed on myself is just with excitement, talk about something that you did recently or with excitement, talk about an event that you're about to go to or with excitement, share on your post that you just got off this webinar that's going to help you in your real estate business. And some of the times that we do this, we just, excitement attracts excitement. So number one, the way that we post on social media is very important to allow it to get in front of more and more eyes. And if you do that appropriately, what I believe will happen is your friends will reach out to you. You can just be you and do what you do. And then they can say, hey, man, I never knew that you were into real estate. I've been wanting to get into real estate. Can I pick your brain? And then you're like, wow, I have it made. You know, Ad what Adam Adams just told me happened. And so it, there comes a point where you just be who you are and people want or start to attract to you. And then you say, yeah, I'll, I'll answer your questions. You never had to pitch it. And the same thing that I would do when I'd be walking through, I actually have these shirts, happiness is passive cash flow. I give them away for free to anybody who gives me a five-star rating on my podcast, right? I love these shirts because I walk through and people are like, oh, I love that shirt. And I'm like, yeah, I own apartment buildings. And they're like, what? How did you get into that? And so there's just little strategies that you can just kind of be you, be who you are in front of people and the ones that are interested can come to you. Uh, Dan, do you have any strategies the opposite where you're actually going up to somebody and saying, do you want to partner with me or do you have something opposite from what I just said? Sure. So I would, I don't, I would, I actually recommend, you know, like, like you had mentioned, not you know, you're trying to build that, 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 that credibility and building that relationship with them. Now, not going up to them and saying, hey, will you invest in my deals? And one of the things that I think that, that will help you, Adam, and others that are listening is, is but when, you, when you talk to somebody that is a high net worth individual about what you're doing, if they don't get excited about it, then I don't, I don't ever try to press it on them at all. And even if they do sound excited about it, I'm not going to press it on them but I might handle things a little bit differently. Like if I'm at a, a networking event or, you know, if I'm at church and a, and a, and a, and a, uh, and a high net worth individual comes up to me and starts talking to me and then they start to ask me what I'm doing now, I, that opens me up an opportunity to talk to them about, you know, what I'm doing. And, I, and I'll tell you, Adam, it's been, it's been a challenge for me because I, I come from an entrepreneurial background where, you know, I have five medical offices that I own in South Carolina. And in my arena right now, a lot of people don't know that I'm doing real estate. They think I'm just a medical office owner. And one of the ways that you can get them to start to talk about things is, is take them to lunch, take them to, take them to dinner. You know, you join this club core group that I'm telling that I was talking to you about and bring them and bring them to that and, and, and it's just start that conversation with them. And you have to meet with these people and talk to them about them. You know, people, people like to talk about themselves. And so when you, when you invite someone to go to lunch that's a high net worth individual and you haven't been around them a long time, just, you know, send them a text message and say, hey, hey, John, you want to go, you want to go to lunch tomorrow and, and kind of and catch up. And organically out of that conversation, unless they're just so egotistical, they're going to ask you what you're working on right now, what you're doing. And that's your opportunity to talk to them about what you're doing. And again, they might not right then go, oh man, that's so exciting. You know, here, here's $100,000 put in your next deal, but you can talk to them about what you're doing. You'll be able to gauge when you talk to those people, whether or not they like it or not. Because you might go to lunch at them with a, a high net worth individual that you've known for 10 years, and they look at you like you're crazy because you're investing in, 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 in multifamily. Now, that's mm -hmm. all part of the, the, the process of, of, of educating them, but that, that's what you have to do. I have one other thing that I've used as well. If I, um, I, I don't know why I neglected to mention this, but it's worked well for me. I'll reach out to somebody who has high net worth, and all I'll say is, hey, do you, 
I, I know that you um, have a, a great job and what, however you pitch it, you, that the, the part is that I'm trying to say is you bring them to one of your events. So if you have an event or if you know of an event, um, if you want to invite them to one of my events, I'll give you a free ticket. So you basically can just say opportunity to, um, to bring in uh, a couple of friends. And I know that you have, you've been a doctor for this time. If you're interested in being in real estate, um, I'd love to invite you to come to this event and I'll even give you a ticket for free. And what that, all that does is it just as allows you to gauge if they're interested in real estate or not. So maybe they'll respond with, oh, no, I'm not going to do real estate. And then you're like, okay, cool. You're done. You didn't ask them anything about your deals. You just said, hey, you might want to come to this, right? And then if they say they do want to come, now you know that they're probably the type of person they're interested in what, you, what you're doing. And now you know that you could cultivate a, a, a relationship with them a little bit stronger. So just by inviting them to a real estate event that you're not – that maybe you're not pitching, you're not hosting. It's just like, hey, this this seems like a good event. Do you want to come with me? I can get you a ticket. Is enough to at least gauge if they're interested in it and know if you can start that next conversation. Well, and and, and that's one of the things that, that I actually um, forgot to mention, Adam. Is you know, that's another way that I use my podcast is whenever I meet somebody that I that's at one of these, you know. Uh, club core events or groups or whatever, or, you know, out, out in, in, in public. And I find somebody who I don't know for sure what their net worth is, but you know, they own a business and they have some success. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why I have my podcast is so it brings up that conversation with them to bring them onto that podcast. And you can do the same thing if you decide to do a podcast and invite some people that you know are high net worth individuals. And that can be a conversation starter. Hey, you know, John, I just started a, a podcast for entrepreneurs and, you know, I want I'm trying to find some successful entrepreneurs to come on and, and be a part of it. Would you be willing to come on and be interviewed? You know, their first question might be, well, what's the podcast? <laughs> I get that a lot. Um, but that's your opportunity to, again, bring that conversation up and, uh, and, and talk to that, uh, that high net worth individual. So I think, you know, um, Adam, really thinking about these high net worth individuals and, and doing a strategy like Adam mentioned, um, or what I've been mentioning here and, and really just trying to think outside the box and think of ways to, to get in front of those people, especially if they already know, like, and trust you, you've got to just sit down with them and introduce what you're doing and talk to them. And then again, it's not a salesy type pitch. It's a, you know, Hey, let me tell you what I'm doing for some of my investors and, and some of the, and some of the, uh, the returns that we're, we're getting and, and projecting and, and different things like that. And if they're interested, they're going to raise their hand. And, uh, and at the very least, you know, if they don't say yes, they want to invest right then, and you, you can ask them, well, would you like me to put you on your investor list? Or, or even say, you know, do you know anybody in your circles that would be interested in, 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 in learning about this more? And a lot of times they'll refer you to people, even though they might not right then want to do something. So um, great question. Great question. It was a good, uh, good dialogue back and forth back with, with that one. Um, so uh, I don't think I have any other questions that have come through. What, there's a couple of things that I would appreciate for you guys to do before you jump off is, is if you've gotten any value at all from what we've talked about today, I'd like you to do three things for me. And again, we didn't charge for this webinar. Um, I'm not making any money off of this webinar. Um, and so what I'd like for you to do is number one, if you're on the Facebook live, just say, just, just put a comment on there about how much you've enjoyed it as well as put, you know, liking it or, you know, however you want to do it so that other people who are just browsing through might find this as they're, as they're browsing through their, their feed. It just helps the, the credibility of the, of, the, of, the, of the group. And then number two, if you're on, um, anywhere you're on, whether you're on uh, 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 our webinar through Zoom or you're listening to the recording or watching the recording or you're on Facebook, make sure that you go to meetup.com and go to our and search for multifamily investor nation. And when you search for multifamily investor nation, there's a, there's a place there to join one of the meetups. I would appreciate if you would join one of the meetups and even uh, go on there. Now meetup has reviews on meetup. So you can put a review on there about the content, about, about, you know, what we're trying to do and what we're trying to provide. It helps to build the credibility there. And then the third thing I would ask for you to do is join one of our closed groups, either on Facebook or LinkedIn. 
So if you like LinkedIn more than Facebook or you have both, go to LinkedIn, go to um, just type in the search box where you would normally search for somebody and just type in multifamily investor nation, multifamily, all one word, investor nation. And there'll be a place there for you to be able to um, join our, our group. And then also on Facebook, we have a, we have a closed Facebook group that's called Multifamily Investor Nation. And so thank you guys so much for taking some time out of your schedule to be here. Um, thank you, Adam, for being here. Make sure you go to realbluespruce.com slash OPM now to register for that event coming up in November. I'm going to be there. Adam's going to be there. There's going to be a lot of other high, high level people that are playing on a, another level there. And again, thank you so much for being here on the podcast. Thank you again, guys. We'll see y'all later. Oh, somebody asks a question. In addition to your own excellent books and podcasts, what are your favorite resources in learning the business? Dan, sure, do you have that. You, do you have a, yeah, well, I'll, I'll tell you a couple of them that I've, I've had that, are, that has helped me is, 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 number one, I'm a seminar junkie. So I love going to seminars. And that's, for me, one of the best ways to really dive deep into some of the content. If uh, you also want to look at some other books, I haven't personally wrote a book. I do have a podcast that's about entrepreneurship, not necessarily multifamily. I know, Adam, you have a book which you could mention. Um, I'm not sure exactly what it is. I haven't actually heard about it before, but oh, um, I'm yeah. you mentioned about it earlier. It's, it's a meetup book. It's, it's just a yeah. book about how to – it's a book about meetup and um, and it's extremely comprehensive. I mean – if I could just tell you like one quick, quick strategy right now, and that's game changing, right? Just any of my strategies. One is how to hack into other people's networks. When you bring in a speaker that might have their own meetup group, then you go and private message all of their members messages and say, Hey, are you going to that event? I, I want you look at their, you look at their bio and you see what they're into and you say, Hey, I noticed that you're doing wholesales. Love to talk to you about that. Are you going to that event that, John Stockton's going to be speaking at you just all of a sudden they're like, Oh no, I didn't know he had an event. And then you, and you say, yeah, it's, it's on this date. I'd love to meet you there. It's all about meeting them. I'd love to meet you there. Uh, do you want me to send you the link? This strategy is perfected like 100% perfected and you can hack into somebody else's entire group to get your group full. And that's just one of like 40 different tips that I give you in the book. But the book, is going to be actually launched at the event. So this event on 11, 17, and 18, that's when I'm going to be first selling the book. Um, you can also get it for free if you give me a five-star rating and review on my podcast. But um, there, So it is in pre. But on 11, 17, at that event, I'm going to have a booth, and I'm just going to offer it to sell for 19 bucks. So um, I'm excited. I know, I know it will be pretty valuable. Well, and I know you're not biased at all, but I know it will be valuable as well because I know I have been following you quite a bit on uh, on your on your meetups that you've been doing, and it has been uh, quite the quite the the journey. I'm sure that that, that I know that you have been on. Um, so uh, I'm glad that you've actually wrote that book. Now I know somebody also asked about resources for finding seminars and those kind of things. That's one of the other reasons why I created Multifamily Investor Nation is to on our closed Facebook group to actually have a list of events that are coming up that are from not just from me our meetup groups but but from larger events and so um i'm gonna be putting more and more of those on there if you guys come across events that you want us to put on the facebook page you know we can definitely do that as well so you know it, basically tie yourself into our meetup group and uh and we'll be glad to to do that um for you i'm going to post a couple of links here um on our um, webinar chat for those of you who are live and a link to our meetup page if you want to get some more information there and then I also put one a link to our Facebook group so you can join the closed Facebook group so thank you guys so much for being on did you have any other final words Adam before we close it up sorry had it muted again no no no, no final worries. words just would love would love to see you all at that event uh, 375 active syndicators uh, an amazing networking event and most events like this are a thousand bucks. So I would, I just, I really look forward to seeing everybody there. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Adam, I'm looking forward to networking with you some more as well. Um, I know we met for the first time and, and uh, we've been connected for a couple months now, but 
Uh, we've been uh, met you for the first time up there in Boston at, an, at another event and connected with you in person and met you. Look forward to doing it again at your event in November. And I also want to mention to everybody that our next webinar that's going to be coming up um, is going to be, I believe it's going to be on the 9th or maybe even the 16th. I think it might be the 9th, um, but I'll send you guys out an email. It's going to be on cost segregation. So a lot of their people have questions about what is cost segregation, how it can benefit multifamily, and I will also be answering questions about how it will, um, how it can impact a deal and uh, and provide you know some better uh, uh, teasers, not teasers, but better you know returns for your investors, and, uh, and how it could be a game changer for for your investors that are the that are in that high net worth state state. So make sure that uh, you you register for that webinar. Calling, it's going to be called. It actually is called uh, cost segregation. We're going to have an expert, Yona Weiss, on that one. So um, we'll be posting it, of course, on our closed Facebook group. Uh, we'll also be posting it on our Multifamily Investor Nation Meetup page, and uh, also sending you an email. So thank you guys so much. Hope you have a good rest of the night. And uh, until next time, talk to you later.